Good evening. Tonight, the joy that launched us into Holy Week last Sunday comes to a, a screeching halt, even if it's only for a while. Tonight, we remember the life lived between the cradle and the cross, between the manger and the tomb, between birth and death. Over the last few days here at WPC, we've been talking about the symbols of Holy Week. On Sunday, I talked about the juxtaposition between the palms and the donkey. The palms representing victory in battle. The donkey, peace and surrender. The palms and the donkey used together in one parade. And then last night, we looked at the commandment that Jesus gave to love one another because he first loved us with, with Monday Thursday. There was the bread, there was the cup, the act of Jesus taking blessing, breaking, and giving. Tonight, I want to invite us to think about two other symbols, the symbol of light and darkness. And if you have a candle in your house that you can safely light, I'd invite you to do so now. The symbol of light and darkness has taken on all kinds of meanings. And some of the ways we talk about it in today's world are helpful and some aren't. Some are even harmful. But in our context tonight, the light, it represents the light of Christ in our lives. And the darkness, emptiness, purposelessness, the lack of Christ with us. At the end of our service, I'll ask us to blow out our candles and to sit in the discomfort of it all, to sit in the unknown just for a while and to rest in that place before we get to the celebration of Easter. Will you please join me in prayer? Holy God, we come here tonight recognizing that this day is different from any other day in our calendar. In the midst of a season that holds the promise of spring, the promise of new life, in a world that is beginning to open up after a difficult year. We have come to share in a story of betrayal and execution. We've come to hear, to sit and listen, to share the tragedy and to embrace the darkness. Gracious God, in our time together, keep us aware of your presence, e even in the darkness. Help us to, to sit in that knowing that, that you are with us at all times, through all seasons, even when it feels like you're not. Lord, may you be glorified in our service tonight. We pray these things in your name. Amen. dry drink of the water come and thirst no more come all you sinners come find his mercy come to the table he will satisfy taste of his goodness find what you're looking for So loved the world that he gave us His one and only Son to save us Whoever believes in him Will live forever
Gracious God, this evening we come boldly to your throne of grace, where we are assured to obtain mercy in our time of need. As we continue into this holiest of weeks, we are overwhelmed at the extent of your love, that while you could have called down legions of angels to do your work, you chose to come as a servant and to give your life so that we may find life in you. So this evening we gather in myriads of ways distract, dist distanced by this pandemic, but we gather in unity of spirit as the beloved bride of the church. So Lord, we thank you for this amazing body of believers, including our pastors, our elders, and our deacons who tirelessly work to care for this flock. We thank you, God, for this magnificent planet, this wonderful community, and for the miracles of restoration that continue to amaze us. We gather and offer these prayers because we trust you, God, that even in these disruptive, turbulent, fearful and uncertain times, we cling to you. Because though we find ourselves in uncharted territory, we know as our sovereign king that none of this takes you by surprise. So even in the darkest valleys, we will not fear, for you are right here with us, guiding us, watching us, and going before us. So we cast our cares on you, assured that nothing can separate us from your love. So today, Lord, as dependent yet expectant children, we come with humble hearts asking you to protect our congregation, our city, and our nation. Provide us peace and safe passage during these chaotic times of social unrest, political upheaval, and economic instability, all in the midst of a global pandemic. We pray for our local city, state, and national leaders that you would continue to protect them and by any and all means give them great wisdom and strength that they would resist the temptation to grab power for power's sake, but lead you as you would have them to. We ask for your attentive presence and merciful care for the most vulnerable among us, those who might not make it into our daily prayers, the lonely, the aging, the addicted, and the forgotten. Help us, the church, 
your church, to joyfully and sacrificially be the eyes, ears, hands, and feet of Jesus to each of these. Let us not forget them. Lord, there are those among us who have prayers and concerns that are too personal, too scary to voice out loud. So in this quiet moment, hear those prayers. And now, Lord, hear us as we pray the prayer that the Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Friends, as we sit in our homes with the light of Christ, reminding us that we are not alone, let's take some time to remember Jesus' journey to the cross. Jesus' journey to the cross begins in the Kidron Valley, at the base of the Mount of Olives, right outside the walls of Jerusalem. In Mark 14, we read, They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it was possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Peter, James, and John fell asleep while Jesus prayed. When he returned to them for the third time, Judas appeared with an armed guard crowd sent by the religious elite. Judas told the angry mob he'd give them a sign, and he went to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus said, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. They took Jesus to Caiaphas, the high priest. The chief priests and the whole council were looking for a false testimony about Jesus, a reason to put him to death, but they couldn't find one. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow, this guy Jesus, he said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest asked Jesus if he had a response, but Jesus was quiet. Then the high priest asked, tell me, if you're the Messiah or not. Jesus replied, you have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, this has blasphemed. Why do you still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, he deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus didn't reply. Pilate asked the crowd if there was anyone they'd like him to release. A man named Barabbas was in prison with a group of rebels who had committed murder during an insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release the king of the Jews? Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed Jesus over, but the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas instead. Pilate said, you want me to release the one you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. 
The soldiers led Jesus into the palace courtyard, and they brought everyone together. They clothed him in a purple cloak, twisted thorns into a crown, and pressed it down on his head. They mocked him, saluting and saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They hit him on the head with a club, spat on him, and knelt down in mocking worship. Then they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes back on him. Then they marched him out to the streets to nail him to the cross. There was a man on his way home from work. His name was Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross because Jesus was exhausted. They took Jesus to Golgotha, which was known as the place of the skull, and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him. It was nine in the morning. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each of them would get. Above the cross hung a sign that read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults and shook their heads, saying, You said you were going to destroy the temple in three days. Come down from the cross. Save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him. They said, He saved others, but can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even the men crucified next to him joined in the mockery. At noon, darkness came over the land, and it lasted for three hours. At three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Those who were standing near heard Jesus and said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a long staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last breath. The curtain of the temple tore in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who was guarding Jesus saw how he died, he proclaimed, Surely this man was the Son of God. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph and Salome, were joined by other women, some of Jesus' first followers. And they watched from a distance, waiting, weeping, not sure of what was going to happen next. You came for criminals and every Pharisee You came for hypocrites even one like me You carried sin and shame The guilt of every man The weight of all have done Nailed into your hands Amazing grace, I've seen and tasted it. It's running through my veins. I can't escape its grip. In you, my soul is safe. You cover everything. Oh, your love bled for me. streams knowing your death is hell's defeat 
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Before Jesus breathes his last breath, he cries out from the beginning of Psalm 22. And shortly later, the light of Christ is smothered. I invite you to blow out your candle at home. The beginning of the Psalm that Jesus quoted on the cross, it, it continues. Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night. I find no rest. Tonight, tomorrow, may we sit in that void, the anguish, the restlessness. We know Easter Sunday is coming. Victory is on its way but we can't get there without the journey we've been on tonight. Go in peace. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you Oh, 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 oh,